Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Today is a communion Sunday, uh, so be sure you have your elements for Holy Communion that were uh, at the door when you came in. You can get your chalice and your bread, uh, your wafer. And if you are at home, be sure to gather, and um, we will have a time to take out those elements a little bit later in our communion service. Today we would like to begin with confession and forgiveness. If you would please stand, if you are able. And we will begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our uh, gathering song today is Now We Join in Celebration. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. You may be seated. Thank you. 
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him so that we may triumph over all the evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We will now have our readings. Good morning. Immediately after Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit they hid from God, neither takes responsibility for their sin, instead blaming each other, the snake and even God. The curse on the snake was understood as a messianic prophecy by the early church who associated Eve's offspring with Christ. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me from the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate it. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Word of God, word of life. Please read the Psalm 130 responsively with me. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. Life in the present is transitory and cannot compare with the eternal home God has prepared for us. So we do not despair no matter what life might bring because we know that as God raised Jesus from the dead, God promises to bring us into eternal life. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through chapter 5, verse 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith, that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. 
For this slight momentarily affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Word of God. Word of life. At this time, I ask you to please stand if you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and, and by ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a king is divided against itself, the kingdom itself cannot stand. And if the house is divided against itself, that house is not able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. And then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, standing outside. They sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are, and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So, just who is this Jesus of Nazareth? I mean, here at Church East Sunday, we know that he is the Son of God, made human flesh and blood for our salvation. But think about this question from the perspective of the people around Jesus in his own day. They were living alongside Jesus in his ministry, and there was a learning curve for them as to who Jesus is. So who did they think Jesus was? There were those who loved his miracles and his powerful teaching. They wanted to see more and more of his works, but they did not really maybe get to know who Jesus was, not always. And Jesus would have to teach them the reason for his miracles, because he performed them, not to show that he was just some wonderful miracle worker, but that he was truly the Son of God who came to save them from their sins. For now, however, Jesus' fame grew because of his great miracles, and so people kept flocking to see him. But the scribes and the religious teachers of the day didn't like his popularity. They feared Jesus might cause an uprising among the Jewish people against Roman rulers. And so these experts in the Jewish scriptures tried to discredit Jesus quickly and simply as they knew how. They declared him to be in the league with Beelzebul, the prince of demons from the local Philistine cult worship. This Beelzebul was a strong man in the house of evil spirits, and that must have been how Jesus did his miracles, right? So essentially, they said, the scribes said that Jesus was working with Satan. How absurd. Satan, after all, is the enemy of mankind. His sole mission is to lie and destroy, a mission that can be traced back to the very outset in the Garden of Life, in the Garden of Eden. 
Through Satan's challenge of God's word, sin entered the world, and with sin came the reign of death over us. And that is what Satan always seeks to do, destroy and kill. So Jesus was, was Jesus ever in a league with Satan? Not a chance. What did Jesus do? But Jesus healed people. He gave people back their lives, freeing them from being demon-possessed, healing the sick, curing the diseased, and preaching the wonderful word of God's free forgiveness from all of our sins. That was not the destroying activity of Satan, but the rebuilding activity that only God, who truly loves and cares for us, can do. And so our Lord Jesus rebukes the scribes in the strongest possible way, saying, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first finds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder in his house. From a very basic view of logic, Jesus tells us that tells these scribes that they totally missed the boat. Wars cannot be won if kingdoms or houses are divided against themselves. And if there is infighting going on, the war is already lost and the kingdom would fall. Jesus had come, after all, to bring life and light to the world. And he was fighting Satan as only the Son of God could. He had come to take on the strong man for us and win. While no other man born of woman could ever face Satan and his offspring of sin and death and win, Jesus was no ordinary man. He was the Son of God. And this is what Jesus still had to teach people. That born of Mary, Jesus was rather nondescript in his humanity, having no form or majesty that we should look at him, as the prophet Isaiah said. Yet he showed in word and deed that he wasn't like the rest of us. His miracles pointed to his divinity. This is also why he preached God's forgiveness as no other religious teacher of his day could. But in a few years' time, he would truly be set apart from anyone else from what he came to do. For Jesus was about to crush Satan once and for all on the cross. There he would end Satan's rule and authority over us by taking away the one thing that the Father could not dismiss, just dismiss, sin. And Jesus came to pay our debt of sin, all of our errors of judgment, all of our selfish obsessions, our lusts of heart and mind and soul. Jesus would pay for it all as he extended his arms in that tree for you and for me. And because all of our sin has been paid for by Jesus' blood, death no, has no hold over us anymore. Death's claim of authority has been muted and made impotent and destroyed. And Jesus holds the keys of death now. And just as he burst forth from the tomb on Easter morning, we too will rise from our graves on the last day with our Savior Jesus. Those scribes should have known who Jesus was. After all, they knew the New Testament very well. They should have understood the prophecies of the Messiah well enough to see that Jesus could not be working with Satan. Satan only destroyed life, but Jesus restored life. To say that Jesus was of the devil then was blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit worked through the words of the Holy Scripture to show us God's own truth. And Jesus was trying to warn those scribes to stop their unbelief after all, he had come from God to seek out the lost, to come to save them and us, come to bind up the brokenhearted, to heal the wounds of the body and soul, and forgive all of our trespasses and sins that we might live with him forever. And when we hear that good news, and when we receive it with open ears and hearts and do not doubt or reject it, we are truly brothers and sisters of Jesus himself. And we will... And we will then want to proclaim the good news loud and clear to all who need to hear it. Jesus' strength and power as the Son of the Most High has bound Satan for all time. 
He has taken away Satan's power, crushed his rule and authority, and delivered us from needing to worry about anything that will ever truly hurt us. For in Christ we have eternal victory. And so, while Satan has been bound and chained by Christ's sacrificial death, let us work with him to plunder Satan's old domain. Let us share the good news of Jesus' forgiveness to all those hurting. <clears throat> Satan can't stop Jesus' work of love and mercy. Every time we are together in Christ's name is painful torture on the Prince of Darkness. With every offer of forgiveness of you and I receive and that you and I give, Satan's hold on the world is destroyed. So who is this Jesus? He is not our enemy bent on destruction of all we know and love. No, he is our Savior, sent to save us from our sins. We are baptized into Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, and we are now the true children of God who, rejo who rejoice in the good news of Jesus. And let us share Jesus' forgiveness with those around us, offering mercy to all in need. And let's do it in the name of Jesus. After all, Satan's rule is undone, and Jesus' kingdom has come. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our song of the, of the day is a mighty fortress is our God.
God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for all believers over in the world. Unify us in the service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy. God of the cosmos, we pray for the creations, the gardens, the waterways, and the creatures. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or are in need in any way. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. We ask your healing today for Dory, Lorraine, Scott, Brian, Kathy, Dennis, Megan, Jeff, Nancy, Sarah, Kathy, Randy, Keith, Roger, Helena, Barb, Jody, Jay, Tyler, Logan, Jere, Sherry, Jim, Alicia, Tom, Tim, Sean, Mark, Norman, Bonnie, Grace, Lynn, Tilly, Leanne, Tim, Marge, Joyce, Clint, Olive, Linda, and Roxy, and anyone who we name aloud or silently in our hearts right now. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit, Lord, in your mercy. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy we may extend grace to more and more people. Bless the young students and the mentors that are going on the mission trip this next week. Be with them, Lord, in their tasks and their mission. Lord, in your mercy. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses in every time, and we give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Please take time to share a wave of peace with those around you. <clears throat> it is now time to acknowledge our offering. The offering plate is located in the back of the church uh, today, or you could give online or mail a check into the church. We appreciate your givings that sustain our ministry and help it grow. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the whole world. Amen. We will now uh, take time to share in Holy Communion with one another. If you will uh, take out your elements. <clears throat> if you will hold them when we do the words of institution, and then we will commune together after uh, the Lord's Prayer. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he broke it, and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of your, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. I have just a couple of uh, announcements that we'll highlight. Again, uh, we want to keep in prayer um, Joe and uh, the groups that are going. Uh, they are leaving next Sunday morning, I believe, early in the morning for South Dakota. And so uh, we'll keep you in our prayers uh, for that. This week we do have uh, a couple of meetings. On Tuesday we have Lake Hanska and Zion Council and Faith Council at 7 on the 10th. Also, uh, it says in our announcements that it's National Rhubarb Pie Day on Wednesday the 9th, so I hope that everybody is enjoying a piece of rhubarb pie on Wednesday the 9th uh, in celebration of that day. Are there any announcements that we wish to share with one another that are not in the... May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will now sing our sending song, Rise and Shine You People. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of th hymn number 393. <laughs> peace, serve the Lord, and remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.